Hey guys, John here from Sonic Drive Studio. I hope you're all doing well and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna try to sound like Alice in Chains using a tube amplifier, the Friedman Double J Junior to be exact, which of course is the signature amplifier for Jerry Cantrell, the Line 6 Helix, and also the XFX3. And the guitar that I'm gonna use is my beloved Gibson Les Paul Custom. You guys have seen this guitar. I love it a lot. It's one of my favorite guitars. I don't have the Jerry Cantrell signature Wino Gibson Les Paul Custom, but this will do just fine. Let's start out with the real tube amp and take a listen to the tones and riffs that I've come up with. Here we go. Alright, that was pretty cool. I think that I got pretty close to that signature Alice in Chains Jerry Cantrell sound. Despite keeping the setup quite simple and straightforward. So what did I use and how did I use it? Let's take a look. So on the Gibson Les Paul Custom I used the bridge pickup of course, which is the Gibson 498T. I really love the sound of this pickup and I believe that this exact pickup is also in the Jerry Cantrell Wino Les Paul. It's just a very articulate and clear sounding pickup with a nice beefy low end. It cuts through the mix quite nicely. And this guitar is tuned to drop C sharp, by the way. And I did double track the guitars. One is panned all the way to the left and the other all the way to the right. So the guitar is being fed into the Friedman Double J Junior, a really cool amplifier. I really love this thing. It obviously is very good at achieving that signature Jerry Cantrell tone. And I'm on the dirty channel, of course, with the JBE mode engaged, which adds a little bit more saturation, basically. So it's a high gain tone with plenty of clarity and bite, but also with a nice, rich and full, yet still tight bottom end. Now, I did look up Jerry's actual settings on his JJ100 amps for his live rig, and I tried to copy those settings almost exactly. And what he does, for example, is crank the bass control up all the way. So that's also what I did. I cranked up the bass all the way. I left the treble and mid controls at noon as well as the presence control. And the gain control is up almost all the way for that nice saturated tone. The amp is going into my trusty Red 7 amplification amp central reactive load and then into York Audio cabinets. And for the cab tone, I wanted to use the newly released York Audio MRSH412 MV30 package, which is based on a Marshall 4x12 cab with G12 vintage speakers. It's just an excellent sounding cabinet, one of my favorites for sure, and it's just a perfect fit for the tone that I'm going after in this video. On the left guitar, I'm using the speaker blend option, which is a blend between two different types of speakers, because this pack features an A and a B speaker, and they are both voiced slightly differently. So the blend combines those. And I'm using Mic Mix 12, which is a blend that I created actually. It's a blend between a 57 and a 121 mic, my favorite combo. So one of those mics is on one speaker and the other mic on the other speaker. On the right side, I'm using the MV30A speaker, so just that single speaker, and I'm using Mic Mix 15, which also happens to be a mic mix that I created myself. And it's also a blend between a 57 and a 121 mic. And by the way, I'm using the exact same IRs for the modeling platforms as well. So this will stay the same and consistent for the entire video. 
And in the DAW, I'm almost doing no processing whatsoever. I just applied a low cut at 90 Hertz just to clear out some low end rumble. Because as always, I want to keep my tones as honest and pure as possible. Let's take a quick listen to the isolated guitars as well. Okay, now let's check out the tones that I created with Line 6's Helix native platform. And do note that you can create these exact same tones with the Helix hardware, of course, as well as the HX Stomp and the Pod Go. Let's go ahead and take a listen to these tones right now. Awesome. That sounded really cool and it actually sounds really damn close to the actual amplifier. Even though there is no double J amp in the Helix, there's just the Placator Dirty amplifier which I used. And it only took me a couple of minutes to dial it in so it was very easy to achieve that tone. For the switches I'm using the HPE mode switch and the saturation switch, not the FAT and C45 switches. On the amp settings I did need to make some small adjustments like lower the mid control but nothing major. It sounds really good and very amp-like to me. Now for the IRs, I am using the Libra plugin, which is just my preferred IR loader of choice. It's just very easy to browse through all my IRs that way. But of course, you can also use the built-in cab loader in Helix Native that will work just fine. And as I said, I'm using the exact same IRs as the previous clip with the real amplifier. So the speaker blend mix 12 option on one side and the mix 15 option of the MV30A speaker on the other side. And also the post-processing is exactly the same. So double tracked, panned, and also a low cut at 90 Hertz. Now let's also take a quick listen to the isolated tracks. Okay, great. Now let's move on to the final platform, the Fractal Audio XFX3. And do note that of course you can also get these tones using the FM3 and FM9. Let's take a listen.
Okay, that sounded cool. It's a little bit of a different tone than the other two platforms, but it still sounds very Alice in Chainsy. The Freedmans in the Fractal just seem to have a little bit of a different voicing, especially in the mid-range, when compared to my Freedman and the Placator Dirty Amp model in the Helix. But it sounds awesome nonetheless, just not exactly the same. So it sounds great and also very Alice in Chains or Jerry Cantrell-ish. And the amp model that I used was the Freedman HBE V3 amp model. And the settings I used aren't very extreme. I boosted the treble a little bit on the amp model to add some clarity, but other than that, nothing special. I didn't use any of the advanced amp parameters, and in the cab block I'm using those same exact IRs as before. Let's also take a quick listen to the isolated guitars. Okay, that's it. Did I come close to that signature Jerry Cantrell Alice in Chains tone? Let me know in the comments down below. Which platform was your favorite? Did you prefer the amplifier, the helix or the axe effects? I'd also love to know what you think about that. That's all for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons along with the notification bell because that really helps out the channel. And you can also follow Sonic Drive Studio on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Thank you guys so much and I hope to see you soon. Cheers.